Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's video, we are starting a new topic of organic chemistry, which is the carbonyl compounds. So we'll be talking about carbonyl compounds here. Because when we were studying the oxidation of alcohols, we kept using the words aldehyde and ketone. So it would be a good time for us to understand what these are. When you talk about carbonyl group, it is actually this functional group on the screen, which is a double bond between carbon and oxygen atom. This is known as the carbonyl functional group. There are also other functional groups which contain this, but the only two functional groups which have carbonyl as a separate entity in them are aldehydes and ketones. So we have aldehydes which have carbonyl always on the terminal. They have carbonyl group always on the terminal. So you can have alkyl group on one side of the carbonyl and a hydrogen atom on the other side of the carbonyl. So the first category of carbonyl groups is aldehyde which have that which have these groups on the terminal carbon and then the other category is the ketones so ketones have a carbonyl not on the terminal rather in the middle of the chain so you will see they have two alkyl groups around the carbonyl group this R means alkyl group which means a carbon chain so these two are both alkyl groups on both sides. Let's do some naming of carbonyl compounds so that we know how to distinguish between them and then we'll talk about their chemical properties. As we move towards naming, we should know that the name of aldehyde ends with the let ends with the phrase AL and the name of the ketone ends with the phrase O N E. Aldehydes have their names ending with the phrase AL and ketones have it ending with the phrase O and E. You never talk about the numbering in aldehyde. So in aldehyde, no numbering is needed. No numbering. Because aldehydes are always terminal, so we don't need numbering. But in ketone, there is numbering. Let's do some examples. The first structure on the top left, you can see this structure it's an aldehyde with carbon number one because it's the aldehydic carbon we number from the aldehydic carbon one two three so it's going to be called propenyl it's going to be called propenyl prop because it is three carbon compound and al because it's an aldehyde so it's a propenyl when you go to this second structure on the top right you can see it's a four carbon aldehyde with a branch. When we number it, it becomes one, two, three, four. There's H missing on carbon three, so I drew it here. So one, two, three, four. We first name the substitute, or you can say the chain, the branch, which is three carbon branch. Like there's a, there's a branch on carbon three. So we're gonna be calling it three methyl. It's gonna be called three methyl and then we'll call it butanel, 3-methyl-butanel because it has a substitute on carbon-3 and overall it's a 4-carbon aldehyde. Moving on, we can see this structure on the left side of the screen. It has 1, the first aldehyde carbon, then 2, 3, 4, 4 carbons in the main chain and there are two substitutes. One is on carbon number three which is a methyl group and the other is on carbon two which is a bromo so we'll call the bromo first because it starts with the phrase b so so it starts with the letter b so two bromo and then we'll say three methyl two bromo three methyl butanel so two bromo three methyl butanel is the name of this structure we have one more aldehyde which is a simpler one uh, but we'll talk about it later. Um, moving on, we have a ketone. We can see here the structure that I'm highlighting with a blue pen right now. 
this is actually a ketone how do we know this because the carbonyl let me show you the carbonyl this is the carbonyl in the red box this is in the middle of the chain it's not terminal so let's number it we'll number it from the uh, carbon which is closer to carbonyl so you number it from the carbon which is closer to the carbonyl so carbon number one the second carbon becomes the carbonyl carbon then three four and the carbon on the right is fifth one when you number it there's no branch there's no methyl there's no bromo or chloro so you just call it pentan and since you want to call it ketone so it would be called pentanone you might want to call it pentan own but don't forget to add the number because ketones need numbering so pentan to own it's pentan to own which means five carbon ketone on second carbon let's move on we have this structure here we have this branch starting from the left and then we have this whole ketone here this is the carbonyl because the carbonyl since the carbonyl is in the middle it's a ketone let's number it from the side which is closer to carbonyl's right side first carbon second is the ketonic carbon three four five you can see there is a branch there's a methyl on fourth carbon and there's a bromo on fourth and uh, there's a chloro on fourth carbon so first we'll talk about the chloro because it starts with the letter c four chloro then there's a methyl on four so four chloro four methyl then pentan to own why two because the ketone is present on carbon two so pentan to own let's name this structure towards the bottom right you can see it's a longer chain i'm highlighting the entire chain here if you notice my carbonyl is closer from the left side from the terminal of the left side left terminal carbon one two three and if you had numbered it from the right side it would have been fourth one like this one two three four so we are going to number it from the left side so one two third carbon becomes the carbonyl carbon four five six you can see the carbonyl is on carbon number three and you have OH group on fifth carbon so we're gonna call it a kind of hexanone but don't forget to talk about the OH group since OH is not the parent chain here you will use the prefix you will use the prefix of hydroxy you will use the prefix of hydroxy hydroxy so the name becomes 5 hydroxy because hydroxy is treated as a branch here 5 hydroxy hexane 3 own 3 because the carbonyl is on carbon 3 5 hydroxy hexane 3 own when you talk about aldehydes and ketones they have carbonyl in common in them their naming involves either the phrase al or the phrase own and we number it from the terminal closer to the carbonyl now moving on with aldehydes and ketones let's talk about the physical properties so we're going to be talking about the physical properties and mainly we will be talking about only their melting boiling points because we are going to be talking about their intermolecular forces one thing worth noting is that in carbonyl if the oxygen is here for example it's an aldehyde let's take an example of the simplest aldehyde not the simplest one one of the most simpler ones we talk about ethanol we need to notice one thing that hydrogen and oxygen are not directly joined so that is why you can't expect hydrogen bonding between few molecules or between molecules of ethanol because for hydrogen bonding H and oxygen have to be together so hydrogen and oxygen atoms are not joined 
directly that is why you can't expect hydrogen bonding between the nearby molecules of aldehyde so no hydrogen bonding no hydrogen bonding between aldehyde molecules but when you have a water molecule nearby when I move this aldehydic molecule somewhere here and if you have water molecules nearby let's draw water with black so if you have water molecules nearby like this now hydrogen bonding with water molecule is possible let me show you how the water molecule has oxygen atoms which have lone pairs and they have a partially negative charge they have lone pairs and they have partially negative charge while hydrogen has the partially positive charge whether um, particularly in the water molecule let's keep it that way and we know the oxygen of the aldehyde also has lone pairs so you will notice hydrogen bonding going on between the lone pair of aldehyde oxygen and the nearby hydrogen from water so lone pair of aldehyde oxygen and the nearby hydrogens from water molecules can do that this is hydrogen bonding let me label it this is hydrogen bonding and it is between water molecules and the nearby aldehyde oxygen atom so this is what we have to keep in mind so in today's video we talked about introduction of aldehydes and ketones we talked slightly about their naming and then we talked about the hydrogen bonding that exists in these molecules stay tuned guys thanks